Hi friends, in this video, we will learn of a very interesting research paper that tried to simulate a biological cortical neuron using a deep neural network. Again, this was this is a type of research that typically computational neurosciences or brain sciences or neurophysiology type of departments typically conduct. And this is a very interesting research from the Hebrew University. And they try to show and they try to understand what is the equivalent structure architecture for one cortical neuron. And after a lot of experimentation, they've shown that one single cortical biological neuron is approximately equal to a seven layered convolutional network with approximately about 1000 neurons. This is a very interesting research work in the intersection of deep learning and cognitive neurosciences and computational neurosciences. So let's understand this. There is also a lot of publicly available research that they have open sourced, which you can also use to extend this research or to work on this problem on your own. So this is a research paper which is titled Single Cortical Neurons as Deep Artificial Neural Networks by David Benegoff, Aiden Segev and Michael London and others. And this is this is a collaborative effort from the Center of Brain Sciences and the Department of Neurobiology at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, one of the most prestigious research universities and fundamental sciences universities in Israel. Again, if you want to read this research paper or if you want to see some of the data set that they have open sourced and all the code with tons of detailed plots, tons of analysis that they have done, you can find this all of this in their GitHub profile. I will also post this link in the video description itself. You can just go to GitHub Selfish Gene Neuron as DeepNet. Very interesting piece of work if you want to extend this work or if you want to do some analysis of your own on top of what has already been done by these phenomenal researchers. Now, let's understand this, right? An artificial neuron that we often use in deep learning is a very simple structure. What does it involve fundamentally? A bunch of matrix mat multiplications and some activation functions like ReLU, which is the most popular activation function nowadays. So it's simply a bunch of matrix multiplications and simple activation functions. On the other hand, a biological neuron is fairly complex. Again, there are lots of variety and types of biological neurons. In this research paper, they have taken something called as a layer 5 cortical pyramidal cell, which is a non-trivial biological neuron. It's, it's fairly complex because it is part of the cerebral cortex of humans and other mammals. And what this layer 5 cortical pyramidal cell does is it processes spatiotemporal data. It is surely not a very simple type of biological neuron. It is one of the more complex ones. And in the research paper, they tried to say, hey, to simulate one just neuron like this, what is the type of deep neural network that we need, right? So if you think about it, if you look at this as a biological neuron, as a black box, what it has is it has a bunch of inputs, electrical inputs. These are, these are typically electrical signals. And it has a bunch of outputs. Think of it like a black box. And what it does is, it is basically a temporal sequence of neural activations. So what you get is you get these electrical spikes through inputs and the biological neuron, which is a cortical neuron in this context, processes all this information and then generates a bunch of outputs. That's what a biological neuron is. Now, what the researchers try to do is because this is a spatiotemporal, because this neuron actually processes spatiotemporal data, they've taken a specialized type of convolutional neural network called as a temporal convnet. Again, temporal convnets have been used in the past from 2015, 2016 onwards to process something like a sequence data, again, with some convolution inbuilt into it. So the researchers used a TCN or a temporal convolutional neural network, and they try to provide the same inputs that are given to the biological neuron. Again, biological, biological neurons have been studied extensively. So they've taken a lot of data from their own research on mammalian brains, and they've provided the same type of input signal here. And they said, what sort of neural network is required here to generate very similar outputs to what the biological neuron generates? And they said, okay, so in each layer of this deep TCN, they had 128 neurons per layer. And the question they were trying to find out was, how many layers of this TCN would be needed? They started off experimenting with two layers, then three layers and so on and so forth. Even in the research paper and some news articles after the research paper was published, the researchers said that they thought three to four layers must be sufficient. But they were very surprised when they actually started conducting this research and started trying to find a three or four layer neural network which could simulate 
this cortical biological neuron and they failed. That's the interesting part here. So the objective of this machine learning task was that they were trying to predict the binary spikes. Remember, at the end of the day, a biological neuron actually takes inputs as electrical spikes. These are electrical signals and it also generates electrical signal outputs, right? These are called as spikes. So they wanted to break this problem into two parts. Whatever was the biological neuron actually performing, they wanted to simulate it using a TCN and they wanted to minimize the number of layers. That is the first objective. So the objective, the mathematical objectives that they were trying to, they, they were trying to solve in this context was they were trying to predict the binary spikes. Typically, each spike in a, in a neuron is approximately a one millisecond spike. So they broke the whole time interval into one millisecond intervals and they said, hey, in this interval, will we have an electrical spike or not? Zero or one, right? And if you think about this, this is like a binary classification on a sequence input. And their metric that they used was AUC, right? While spikes are important, again, these are spikes in the output, obviously, right? Because the, if there are multiple outputs, they wanted to see which of these outputs will spike in each one millisecond interval. So they posed this problem with two objectives. One is binary spike prediction at a one millisecond intervals. And they also said in this one millisecond interval, when there is a spike, what will be the voltage? This is like a regression problem. This is like a classification problem with, with it's a binary classification problem with AUC as the metric. And they also had a regression problem where they wanted to predict what will be the voltage in each of these outputs. Right. And for that, obviously, they used a very simple metric, which is a root mean squared error. Now, they've tried lots of architectures and their best architecture, which had seven layers in the TCN network and each layer had about 128 neurons. So in total, there were approximately not 100, but 1000 neurons, approximately 1000 neurons. And their model had an AUC of 0.9911. Again, this is the, the ideal AUC for a perfect model, the AUC is 1.0 and they came very close to this. So they were able to predict these binary spike patterns very, very accurately. In addition to that, as far as the root mean square error for the voltage prediction, the value is also quite low, which is just 0.71 millivolts. If you want to understand it in the context, they could explain 94%, 94.6% of the variation in the voltage just using this model. So this is like a very, very good model because with a very high accuracy, you're able to predict because the AUC score is so high, you can very, very accurately predict when the spike will happen and you can ex are very close to perfectly predict even the voltage, if not perfectly, but very close to perfectly. And they required a, a TCN, a temporal convolutional neural network of seven layers. They've also experimented a lot of other structures. They tried something called as shallow and wide networks. They said, hey, instead of a seven layered TCN with 128 units per layer, can we also try just two layers, a two layered TCN with 1024 units? But this was not no way. The performance of these sorts of, these are shallow and wide networks, right? These are shallow because there are only two layers. These are wide because instead of 128 units, they have 1024 units in each layer. So these are shallow and wide alternatives that they've tried. And they figured out that this is no way comparable to a seven layer TCN with 128 units per layer. Very interesting piece of work. Now, what is the takeaway for us? Again, the human brain approximately has about 86 billion neurons. Now, just imagine the scale of the problem, right? So 86 billion neurons. And if each neuron is approximately, again, there are lots of types of neurons in the human brain. But if each type of neuron approximately is a seven layer TCN, with 1000 artificial neurons, just even in terms of pure capacity itself, right? If you just multiply 86 billion into 1000, that's 86 trillion. Even in terms of raw number of neurons that we have in some of the artificial deep neural networks, including state of the art models, we have a long way to go because this is 86 trillion neurons that we got. Again, there is a lot of depth also that has to be associated because each neuron is equivalent to a seven layer TCN, right? So we have a long way in terms of state of the art. Again, if you look at the state of the art deep learning, it goes into a few trillion neurons now, right? We still have a long way to go in terms of raw number of neurons itself. Again, depth is another consideration that we have to look into here. Again, please don't forget that we still don't have efficient architectures and algorithms like our brains. Our brains are super duper efficient because they've evolved over millions of years of evolution. 
right? In addition to the just the raw numbers of a, even if you have a computational system with 86 trillion neurons, we still need to come up with better architectures which can learn more efficiently and more robustly. We also need better algorithms than simple backpropagation or its alternatives because the brain as we know very well does not do backpropagation. So we still have a lot of research ahead of us to simulate the, the computational power of a human brain. Right? And this is great because there is a great journey ahead of us over the next few decades where researchers like this will try and simulate the computational power of actual human networks or mammalian brain networks in deep neural networks. So a lot of great research in the intersection of computational neuroscience, neurobiology and deep learning.